Hey, it's a great, great privilege to introduce our guest today, hip-hop artist Derek Miner. You know, he's been an important voice, not only in Christian music, but in the wider hip-hop scene. He just released his newest album, Reflection, which shares the name of his record label. Let's welcome him one more time. Hey, Derek, you know, about a month ago, you did release your, your newest album, Reflection. What were some of the main themes that you were trying to communicate with this album? What, were the, what was the main message you wanted to convey? Yeah, um, I grew up in an environment where oftentimes I, I would question my value. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, I, I got saved pretty early, but... Yeah those things would carry along with me. Like yeah. a lot of the frustrations, like growing up in the South, yeah. growing up, um, we weren't poor, but we weren't you know, rich by any means. Yeah. And I think just carrying those things, I think now that I'm older, I realize that a lot of those things, like those things were still there. Yeah. And with the album, I remember just the Lord speaking to me saying like, in today's climate more than any, where being an artist, like oftentimes, like I'm constantly called on the carpet to always be at my best. Yeah. Is to know that you were made in the image of God. Like God made you perfect. Yeah. He made you just how he wants you to be. Yeah. And yeah. like if I'm not if I'm not who people want me to be, that's fine because I'm exactly who God wants me to be. Like I was made in the image of God and I think that that's a relevant message, especially today. Absolutely. Where we have so many things that constantly are, are chipping away at that idea of us being made in the image of God, right, you know? Right. So I think that's the whole idea of the album. Yeah, no, that's something that we've, we kind of get in our head, but it's something that we gotta get into our hearts a little Absolutely. bit more. So thanks for, thanks for the album. You know, my question is also, Derek, help us to get us, help us to get to know you a little bit more. Like, what was your history like? What has been your influences? Not like your artistic influences, yeah. but more of your spiritual influences. What have been some milestones in your life? How have you seen God work? just in your, in your history so far? Yeah. Um, my biggest spiritual influence is my mom. Yeah. I come from one of those, like, single-parent households where mom was the rock. Yeah. And it's like she worked, like, 16 hours a day and yeah. craziness. But I, the, the, the cool thing, and I think, I, like, it, it set a, an awesome example for me is she was the same way out in public. Good. She was at home. It's good, yeah. And I know a lot of people don't have that testimony. They're like, you know, my mom or whatever, you know, my mom was this way, but when she was at home, she, but my mom was, she was always the same. And it was a passionate desire for God. Yeah. That's what she had everywhere she went, you yeah. know? And I think for me, I, I just strive to, to carry that more than anything. So mm -hmm. um, those are some, uh, that's, that's a serious milestone. Uh, Milestone too. I'm, I'm married and yeah. I have two kids. I have a, my son Nolan just turned five two days ago. Happy and, birthday! Yeah, man. And uh, my son, <laughs> my son Zane turns three on my birthday. You have a son birthday. named Zane? Yeah. Me too. Oh, this straight is up. completely a three-year-old son. Yeah, yeah. Me too. I, I promise. <laughs> this is like that's, that's weird. This is not planned. This is like serious. Like, oh, that's awesome. Okay. Are you are Zane? You, yeah. Yeah. I, How you spell it? Z A N E. You're kidding, bro. You too. Let's swap sons for a day, <laughs> see what happens. Let's see what happens, yeah. <laughs> So my huge milestone, yeah, those are Nolan and Zane. Uh, he'll, be, he'll be three in December 16th on my birthday. Um, so that's really cool. Zane is, uh, he has mastered how to torture his older brother. <laughs> he's, he's really mastered that. So one of my milestones is just watching him do that. Nice. That's a pretty cool thing, but nice. yeah. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Hey, great. You know, um, Derek, you know, what, in what ways does your relationship with God help shape and drive your art? In what ways mm. does your relationship with God, your spirituality, like drive uh, the way you, you create music, the way you perform music? It's freedom. I think, mm. you know, in the music industry, and I don't know if there's any creatives in here. It's not just music industry creatives. Yeah. Shout out to the creatives. You there know you what go. I'm saying? There you go. I think at times, have you ever felt like there's like this, this, this lock on your brain, like in a mm -hmm. sense as a creative that you're like, man, I have to do art that works this way. This is what sells. This is what people like. Yeah. And I think, you know, when you look out in 
mainstream culture, most of the time, some of the most creative guys, they're like, man, I have to go get high or I have to do whatever. Yeah. Most of that is just the freedom for them to just say what they really feel. Right. That right. It, it's like you get that liquid courage or yeah, yeah. whatever and you say whatever you feel. I think for me, that freedom has been God. Nice. Like knowing that I can make the music that I want to make yeah. and I can make the music that God put in my heart and that's I'm good. free to do that. And I think for me, that's what my, my freedom has been and that's how my, my faith drives my art is I can be bold, I can be creative, I can talk about things that, that people may, you know, they may not necessarily like about it, but it's cool. I'm cool with rubbing them the wrong way because I know that, uh, you know, I'm in the scriptures and I know that what, what God is saying and, I, and I'm living out, you know, uh, my relationship through my art. I get an opportunity to really share some of my things that are in my heart with my people, so. Great, great. Thanks yeah. for saying some of that. And you know, like, I think one thing is, you know, a good artist really captures the imagination with their lyrics, you know, with yeah. his or her lyrics. And, and a good artist really grabs the hearts and minds of, of society, of people, right? Yeah. And you know, there's a lyric in your song, Free, that I love. Mm -hmm. When I first heard it, I said, oh my gosh, you know, mic drop, one of those things, right? Yeah. And it's, the land of opportunity is only for the ones with opportunity. Absolutely. Can you unpack that for us? And can you tell us some more about what the, what the song Free was about or even like how that came to be? Yeah, so was, uh, the background of of uh, Free was I remember watching the, uh, I remember uh, when I heard about Alton Sterling. Yeah. When uh, watching that thing unfold, and literally I made the beat, I recorded the song, wrote the lyrics, everything in three hours. Right. I mixed it wow. and mastered it, everything myself. Wow. And it was really one of those things of, it was out of passion, it was out of frustration, it was out of sadness that Sadness at the issue, also sadness at the response. Mm. Um, I, I think I don't necessarily get up. I don't necessarily get upset or surprised when I see people that aren't Christians not get it. Yeah, because there's no reason to get it. Sure. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. there's no Holy Spirit there. There's no conviction there. There's no. There's just you're just left to your own self. Yeah. So when I see non-Christians not get it, I'm, I feel sad that they don't get it. Right. I feel even more frustrated when I see Christians and believers not get it. Yeah. The wow. idea of just at the basic level, whether you agree with the, the, the whether you agree with the, the nuts and bolts of everything, yeah. there's a degree of empathy that we should all have. Because that's what Jesus had, right? If we're like, right. Christian is Christ-like, Jesus looks down and he says, oh my God, these people can't save themselves. Right. I need to come down and do something about that. Yeah. He's driven by love, but when you see Christians yeah. that aren't driven by love in issues when people are being killed, that's right. Whether you agree with the reason or not, right. there's something wrong there, and right. there's the frustration there. And I really wanted to take that frustration and that sadness, and I wanted people to see, like, do, you, do we not see people are made in the image of God? Mm. Like, regardless of whether um, socioeconomic background or color or anything, like, we're all made in the image of God. So that means that I shouldn't be too quick yeah. to pull that trigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It also means that if that trigger ever gets pulled, I'm not like, yeah, good criminal. That's because right. Because we all were criminals. Yeah. So what if, what, mm. if, what if God was like, I'm going to wipe out all these criminals. No one would be here. Right. We're all criminals. So, um, so the idea of the lyric, the land of opportunity, is only for the, uh, the ones with opportunity. I remember people saying, why don't... Why don't these uh, criminals or these, these black guys or whatever that are just in the hood selling drugs, like why don't they just get a job? And I'm like, do you not realize the system was set up for minorities and, and, and people in poor environments to not rise? Yeah, wow. It's set up for that. Yeah. So it's like there's a, there's a degree of, there's freedoms here. Right. And there's, there's, there's also blocks that allow certain people to get to those freedoms. Yeah. I don't know one person, I know a, a few drug dealers. I don't know anyone that was like, you know what? When they were like five, I'm gonna be a drug dealer. Yeah. I don't know anyone that made that choice. 
Right. Like every, everyone I grew up with, when we were kids, they were all like, man, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. Yeah. I want to I play video games. I want to be Batman. <laughs> like, but no one is like, I think I'll just be a drug dealer. That's pretty, pretty cool. I, I, and right. I, you, so you have to ask yourself, like what takes a person from wanting to be Batman to a drug dealer? Yeah. What takes a person from wanting to be a police officer to a drug dealer? There has to be strenuous circumstances in between that because we're people just like, like anyone else. And so I think that lyric, I just wanted to encapsule that idea that man, people aren't just, they're not just picking to be unemployed. They're not just picking yeah. to go to jail. No one's like, you know what? I think I'll just go to prison when I grow up. Be cool, cool right, idea. Right, right, right. I have all my all my rights stripped away. So, yeah. and then also knowing that the prison is privatized, and black people we make up you know 16, 20 percent of the population at large, but we make up over almost 70 percent of the prison population. Yeah. And not only that, but you can buy stock in private prisons, meaning that you can buy oh. stock in people. I can buy stock in a system the CCA. I can buy stock in a system huh. that deals in the selling of people. You make, I was told as a kid, you're worth more to the government, you're worth more to the government in prison than you are out because at least someone's making money off of you while you're in prison. Mm. So with that idea, I just wanted people to see like, yo, wake up. No one's just like, I want to be a drug dealer. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I, I go off on, t when it goes into that, I go off on tangents and sometimes Ain't it's hard there. for me to That's come okay, back. That's okay, man. We want you to go off on tangents. <laughs> we want to hear your heart, man. All right. Well, Derek, we're going to answer a few questions from our Biola community. If that works with you. I'm with it. All right. Here we go. Here is our first question. All right. You talked a lot about your personal struggles in Save Me. Could you talk about how God got you through that difficult time and how we should react to the hard times in our own lives? It's interesting. Um, so to give some background on that song, uh, during that time, I had just uh, completed my deal with Reach Records. There was a, I had a two album deal. Yeah. So shout out to Reach, everybody know, you know. Shout out to Reach. I just completed that and uh, sat down with Ben Washer, uh, uh, who was a part owner of, of the label with Lecrae, and I was like, we both were like, yo, I think it might be good to just like yo, let's 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 make it let's let's separate out and let's let's build the genre more. Yeah. Um, because that was the whole idea. Me and Lecrae, before I even signed, he was like, "Man, I want to build you up to own your own thing. Yeah. You know, not to necessarily own your masters for the rest of your life." So yeah. uh, we were like, "Yo, it's time." So I was doing that. My dad passed away, mm. um, and we had a, a tumultuous. Uh, up, you know, relationship. It was mm. good when it was good, but it was rough too. Mm. Um, my wife got a car accident, fractured her spine mm. in several different places, like small micro fractures. Mm. Um, and my manager, uh, a lady that, you know, I trusted for years, she stole thousands of dollars from me. Mm. Um, and I just remember just being like, have you ever just been like, <laughs> <laughs> You know? no, just speechless, just like, it's just, just all like, that. Fam. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, I know your guy, you know everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, I don't know nothing. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just trying to, I feel like I'm, I'm moving, trying to do good things, and there's all this opposition. Yeah. And I remember being in the studio and God speaking to me in that moment and him saying, um, son, just rest in me, mm. rest in me. Yeah. And then you start thinking about Joseph, right? Yeah. Joseph is sold to slavery. Yeah. Gets to Potiphar's house. Yeah. Potiphar's wife tried to set him up. That's right. Goes to prison for several years, mm -hmm. right? Then uh, interprets dreams and winds up being the right hand of Pharaoh. Mm. But you can't be that without going through the other stuff. Yeah. Like if he just was at home with his father, he wouldn't be at the right hand of Pharaoh. The most important thing is not about being at the right hand of Pharaoh, but it's why he was there. Yeah. He was there to save everyone mm. because Egypt would have been done 
if Joseph wasn't there to interpret the dream of famine. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it, it, it's the idea in me that I, I had to realize, like, whatever this is, I know, God, that your thoughts are good for me. Like, you mm. want good things for me. You don't want bad things for me. Yeah. And that's when, when your burdens come, you don't run from Jesus. You run to him. Yeah. Because he has good for you. So I would say for anyone that goes through hard times, run to Jesus because he has good for you. The, the world has nothing to offer. Like, God created you in his image. He loves you. And I think that's the thing. If there's anything that Satan wants to snatch from you is the idea that God loves you. Mm. He wants you to think God is withholding something from you. Mm. That's what he did in the garden. Yeah. Adam and Eve, ah, you know. I mean, you out here chilling. You know what I'm saying? Naming animals, dominion over the earth and stuff. Yeah. God made you, but he's really withholding something from you. Mm. eat the fruit. And they're like, oh, I think I eat the fruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think we do that sometimes. Um, and I say, don't eat the fruit. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Here we go. Here's a question from Tyler. What one musician has influenced you the most? Oh, that's hard. Yeah, man. <laughs> because, Lots of good musicians out there. Yeah, man. And I'm a sponge. Yeah. Uh, I'm a sponge. I soak it up from everywhere. Mm. I was soaking stuff up from these guys. They're amazing. They're Give good, it up right? for them. Yeah. Killing it. Uh, I'd have to say I don't have one. I, I really don't. I, I really, wherever I go, I try to soak up because, I mean, there's so, many, so much talent in the world. Yeah. It's, you have to be a student at all times. As a creative, whatever you're doing, Creative or not, you should always be a student at all times, and that's what I fight to be as just a student, and I, I try to learn from anyone. And yeah. the crazy thing is some of the, the people, the newer people are coming up with so many creative ideas, so I'm just a sponge, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Cool. Here's another question. This one's from Rachel. She says, or she asks, what has your journey as a Christian hip-hop artist been like? I guess you could parse that in different ways as a Christian hip-hop artist or just even as a hip-hop artist. Just what's, what are some of the things in your journey? That's interesting. Yeah. Um, I think one of the, the things for me, this, I, could, I could go probably for hours on just that question alone. Mm. Um, I think one of the huge things is managing people's expectations. Like, mm, that's good. Early on in my journey, like, I was like, yo, I gotta be the, the best rapper ever. And, that's and, right, yeah. and, and then being a Christian, like, I gotta be perfect. Yeah. It doesn't last very long <laughs> because uh, I'm not perfect at all. And I think, you know, people's expectations, they're different. Mm. Like, you know, I, I, I'm going to Texas. Um, I was in uh, Milwaukee. I'm going to be in, like, several cities. I'm all over the country. And everywhere I go, people have their own idea of who Derek Minor is. Mm. They're like, man, I heard your song, such and this. And they think that you're just this person, a certain person all the time. That's right. You know, so... I go to these different places, and at, at first I would try to be that person, but now I just kind of like, what you see is what you get. I'm a country dude from Nashville, Tennessee, yeah. and uh, I make rap music, yeah. and I like anime and, <laughs> and One Republic, so just get over it. There you go, <laughs> yeah. It's kind of, you know, that's kind of how I am now. No, uh, that's good, man. Yes. Yeah. All right, here's another question from our audience. How do you think we can help break the system you mentioned, especially as someone that knows nothing about living in that system? Oh, whoa, we got some snaps here. That's a good one. That's, That's a good, a good one. one. Um, I don't think we can break the system. Mm. I think Jesus can. I mm. think one day Jesus is coming back. He's going to tear that system down. Mm. Right? Right? That's right. That's right. But see, sometimes, like, when we talk about racial injustice, we sort of just think that it's like, oh, it's just a thing we can fix. Like, hmm. but we don't realize that the root of that is sin. Yeah. It's sin being fleshed out in a systematic way. So I don't necessarily think we can break it, but I do think we can, we can do our best 
to fight against it just mm. because there's a sinful system here that doesn't mean we don't fight mm. we fight and, and and we wrestle but the thing is if it's not racism it'll be uh it'll be gender discrimination right. if it's That's not right. gender discrimination it'll be it'll be something it'll be That's persecution right. against christians like right. it's yeah. it's an overall sinful picture so what am i saying am i saying oh well, the system's broken let's just forget it are you saying how can i how can i uh me not being a part of that system what can I do to help change things? I say the same things that you do to help fight against things like abortion and to help fight against sex slavery and to help yeah. fight against, uh, or when, when, your, when your friend is, is struggling, what do you do? It's empathy, it's love, it's grace, it's yeah. mercy, mm. it's being the church, it's fighting to snatch people out of that system. Yeah. You see what I mean? Like yeah, that's yeah. what we're here to do until Jesus comes back and remakes everything. Our right. job is to be his foot soldiers and fighting to snatch people out of the jaws of that system. Yeah. And and the thing about the uh, the system we're talking about as far as racial inequality and things of that nature, right. that goes for the people that are the racists and the oppressed. Mm. For the racist, it's saying, it's calling people out on the carpet and saying, hey man, that's racist. And I really want you to experience all of God's creation. Hmm. That's what happens when you're That's racist. Like I, I've been able to be in front of all types of different cultures and it's beautiful because I get to see how God has wired us and shaped our culture so differently. And I get to take that and, 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 and roll with that. Like, and that's a cool thing. And I think that you fight to snatch people out of the jaws of that wicked system yeah. with the gospel. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for that. Was really tangible too. That was actually yeah. really practical stuff. Yeah, so thank, thank you for you. that. Yeah. Here's another question: How do you think that artists can use their opportunity to advocate for the dignity of those who are trapped by social structures that devalue them? You got to be brave. Mm. I mean, at the end of the day, artists, you guys know what you have to do, and that's be brave. I mean, I'm I live in Nashville, Tennessee. Let's just be honest. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's just not the place you want to fight for racial e <laughs> equality. In. It's pretty, uh, it's progressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's doing better. Okay. But you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can read between the lines. I mean, yeah, I got you. Okay. My first day, here, I, I'll, I'll give you a story. My first day in uh, fourth grade, I was going to a new school, and me and my mom talked about this not too long ago, and I got off the bus. Now, I'm not an old man by no means. But I got off the bus, and I remember a kid yelling, get out of, go home, you stupid porch monkey nigger. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And spitting on me. Fourth grade, my very first day at that school. And uh, that broke me. Mm. That was back home. I remember being in Michigan, and there was this lady, it was a cool, she, it was a white lady, and she had the coolest afro I've ever seen. <laughs> Just, I've never seen an afro that fresh. <laughs> and, I'm, I, I, and I remember I was, I was a young kid, and I was riding the elevator, and I was like hitting all the buttons on the elevator, so it was stopping, and it really made this lady upset. And she, I remember her calling me a racial slur. Mm. And So what I'm saying is, we know it's here. So the tendency is we could shrink back and say, well, I'm gonna risk. Like I've had people say, I'm never buying another one of your records ever mm. because of your song Free. Mm. I'm never gonna uh, go to a concert and they use that. I'm unfollowing you. Like for some reason, you guys feel like unfollowing me is gonna, like that's like the ultimate thing to do. And I'm like, <laughs> Bye. <laughs> See you later. Like, I'm not even running my Twitter anyway. It's an intern, so, you know. <laughs> so that's cool. You know, but I think for artists, it's about being brave and knowing that persecution is going to come along with that. People don't like to hear the truth, yeah. but they got to hear it. And artists are, you guys have such abilities to be able to really kind of help. And you may not change everybody, but that one or two people, think about it, you change one person who could change the trajectory of their children yeah. and their children yeah. and their children. That's what I'm after, generational impact. Mm. Yeah. Thanks, Derek, appreciate yeah. that. Here, oh, here's a, here's a big question, here's a long yeah, question, a here book. we go. 
<laughs> you said something earlier to the effect that fundamental belief in the image of God in the human person should lead to compassion and love. What would it look like to share the gospel with people who are different from us, specifically those without opportunity, with that sort of compassion and love flowing from a conviction of the dignity of God's image? Um, wow. It's a lot there. That's a lot. <laughs> I think I know what you're saying, but so I'm gonna give it my best shot. You do what you gotta do. All right. Um, I think really, I think that it almost feels like the person was writing the question and they answered their question as they got towards the end of it. Yeah, and they yeah. were like, I might as well just send this thing anyway. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I think what it would look like is, is true impact. I think when I look at you, I think some of the issues that Christianity has faced is we look at people as projects sometimes, right? Like, that's my unchristian friend. I'm going to give him Jesus forever. Like, I'm just going to keep, pow. Like, we look at it like it's like, like it's like medicine, like Jesus is medicine. Like, um, and it's not that. It's, it's, we're talking about God here, right? Yeah. So my passion when I see you and I, regardless of what, what your socioeconomical status is, like I see that you're made in the image of God. I'm passionately chasing you whether you're homeless with a sign or mm. whether you're a billionaire because your soul is valuable mm. to God. And, and, and I think at times we get caught up in the fact that, okay, we gotta go to the poorest of neighborhoods. But I mean, there's like, there's rich millionaires that hate themselves and don't know, um, don't know that God loves them. So I think it's the gospel's for all people, and I feel like wherever your heart is leading you to, to passionately fight to go there. So if it's people without opportunity or people with opportunity, we all need Jesus. Yeah. So I don't know if I answered that, but I tried. You know what? You did your best off of that book. So. And, this is, and this is college, so. That's, that's good. You know, that's good. Let's go. All right. Okay. Here's one last one. Oh, whoa. What do you think about that one? Give us a freestyle? Yeah, you okay with that? We could drop a beat. Josh, you want to drop a beat for us real quick? I don't freestyle. All right, all right. I'm hey. terrible at freestyling. Hey, that's okay, that's it's okay. It's bad. Hey, like, you know what? But you know. I, can, I can give you a verse that I've written. We could do that. Can I give you something that no one has ever heard before? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Can I pull a Drake? We could do and that. And do it off of my phone? We could do that. All right. Let's do it. Drake, Drake did it off of his phone. So uh, hold on just a second. I call this one El Presidente. El Presidente. Does that have anything to do with? Uh... <laughs> she said, all right. <laughs> Go on, girl. All right, here we go. This is, the, this is the lyrics. This is straight on the podcast, everything. So I'm really doing a Drake. We, we could do the Drake. We yes, let's that. go. All right, check it out. Free Wi-Fi is the platform I'm running on in 2020 for my presidential bid. And you're going to need all of that data just to stream the new songs from RMG coming out this year. Look, I'm trying to change the nation. But first, I'll build a wall on my Twitter feed to stop your immigration. Look, what's the problem? I used to be your darling. Until I started talking, that white supremacy made me nauseous. Oh, mm. did that make you sick? No, it's a sin, right? Just like all the others, and yes, it offends Christ. Y'all want me back on my Christian rap? Let's go and get to it. The gospel based in all my movements. What is your influence? I'm not trying to survive, dog. I'm th trying to thrive in a country where the prison system privatized. You can buy stock in it like McDonald's burgers and fries. So that means you can purchase human being lives. Now let that sink in. Now what are you thinking? If it's an excuse for sin, then pray for God's conviction. Because that's not godly, no. That's not the Holy Spirit. We purge the lives from our heart and then pray for repentance. My agenda isn't political. Political is biblical. I'll check Democrat mm. or Republican when it's critical. You, can, you can't serve two masters, choose hard. It's either God over government or government over God. Mm. Thank you. El Presidente. El Presidente right there. El Presidente. <laughs> hey, you got to run in 2020. Hey, I'm going to hold you to that. I might do it. All right. All right. Me, me versus Kanye. There you go. You know what I mean? <laughs> there you That's go. What gonna do. There you go. Hey, yeah. we got one last question for you, and this is uh, the question we ask all of our bio hours, I guess. Yeah, yeah. What are some of the biblical principles that you thought about, even as you shared today, but what are some of the things that you've been thinking about, even as an artist? Mm. I've been going through this sermon series by uh, Pastor Blake Wilson, 
in uh, Houston, yeah, a crossover, uh, crossover Bible church. And he, told, he tells the story of Joseph. And again, I think I will reiterate to everyone that's here, you have to know and believe that God loves you and that you have to trust and have faith in him. Where is the sin in Genesis 3? Where is the sin? The sin is that God does all of this for us. Mm. He creates us, he gives us dominion, we chilling. I picture Adam riding a lion, like just coming out like. <laughs> so, <"What's up>, baby? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I just picture it like it going, wow, yo. And God is like, it's cool. I set all of this up for your joy in me. Mm. They had untethered right. relationship. I, mean, I had mm. a strong relationship with God, man. And then um, we listened to the snake over God. Mm. And I feel like that is the wrestle for all of us. And I'm going to tell you, God wants your joy. He wants you to be happy in him, and there's no happiness outside of him. So that's what I wrestle with day after day. It's continuing. Am I going to believe God, or am I going to believe the snake? Mm. Am I going to fight for joy, or am I going to continue down a path that in the end, every time I've sinned and made mistakes, I feel horrible? Mm. Like, am I going to continue being a masochist, or am I going to chase the joy of God? Yeah. And I think that's what it is, is choosing to chase the joy of God every day. Thank you, Derek. Appreciate that. Appreciate Thank your you. words. Thanks, man. Okay. All right. Thanks for being here. All right. Biola University prepares Christians to think biblically about everything, from science to business to education and the arts. Learn more at biola.edu.